What does filmed for IMAX mean? It isn't just a movie that'll look great on IMAX's screens. It means that hiding from a sandstorm feels like fear in every flicker. And every triumph is felt in every sound wave. And the things we've only imagined, you can truly experience those too. That's what filmed for IMAX means. Get tickets to Experience Dune Part 2 now and IMAX's exclusive expanded aspect ratio. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Little Wing is now streaming on Paramount Plus. I'm in a period of emotional upheaval. Is that all the oh, I don't care crap? A little adventure. Where are you going? I'm gonna steal a bird from the Russian pigeon mafia. Let's do it. Goes a long way. <laughs> Starring Brooklyn Prince with Kelly Riley and Brian Cox. Life can hurt, but life is sweet. Little Way, Brady PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Now streaming exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. This episode is brought to you by Paramount+. Plus. Get in, loser! Mean Girls is now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Join Katie Heron as she meets the plastics and Tina Fey's new twist on the modern classic. Get ready for more of the rumors, backstabbing, and jokes you loved from the original movie with some fetch surprises. Rated PG-13. Wear pink and head to ParamountPlus.com to try it free. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. This podcast contains mature content, explicit language, suggestive situations, and partial to full frontal nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Don't let your kids listen to this. I saw a car on fire the other night. I've seen cars smoking before. This car was on fire. Fire. Smoking what? This car is on fire. I mean, I've just never seen that before. It felt very, very like my next pick, maybe. Oh. Maybe. Which we all know. Oh, yeah, you guys know it. The audience doesn't know it. Because you're canonizing, right? That's what you're doing in 2024. I'm not canonizing me? Yeah, you. How is that canonizing it? Because you talked about it a lot. So any movie that we've talked about before is now canonizing it when you pick it? No, that's stupid. Well, you have to be doing shtick. Otherwise, what are you doing in 2024? You know? It is canonizing, Zach. If we take it from non-canon, we talk about it, but it's non-canon, yeah. but then we make it canon, that's canonizing it, kind of. Yeah, it's been canonized. No. I hate to Absolutely not. side with Maze no. on this, but I think he's got a point. No, 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 no. no. Just because we've mentioned a movie before. So, like, we've mentioned Madam Web. If we end up doing Madam Web, we're canonizing Madam Web. Oh, we're definitely canonizing Madam Web. Yeah. I can't wait. I don't want to go see it in the theater, okay? What? We're not going to. It'll be on streaming by the time this episode is out. <laughs> by the time we're done recording this episode. <laughs> Zach, you are a liar. You are a liar. If you're telling me you don't want to go to, like, an IMAX to see Sydney Sweeney's <laughs> giant purples. <laughs> Oh, what? Sydney Sweeney's giant popos are so magnificent. I don't even know about her roundy situation. I have no idea. She might have a roundy. She might have zero roundy. I don't know. All right. I don't know. Because the giant popos are so magnificent. Everyone going, you have to go see in the theater because her giant popos will be on the screen. I've seen clothed tits before who else has told you that everybody's saying it everybody <laughs> everybody norm told them the entire internet oh you gotta go see madam webb it's terrible and sydney sweeney blah, blah blah i'm not here to lust after sydney sweeney okay i'm just not i just remembered snacky tuna <laughs> the unhoused <laughs> the unhoused gentleman i gave him cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the unhoused gentleman narrative. It's a whole story. There's a whole meme story out there on the cynophobe Instagram of the unhoused gentleman and his adventures. Definitely outside of the 7-Eleven he keeps going back to for the... Yes, yeah. That's the snacky extended universe. 
<laughs> the snacky extended universe is just a 7-Eleven. It's a mini ball <laughs> down the street from his house. <laughs> it's a cosmic mix of the action of the 90s combined with the exploitation films of the 70s. But with modern touches, it's hyper-violence, but it knows that it is. It's a little bit Tarantino. It's definitely a little bit Michael Mann. It's kind of a cosmic gumbo. It almost moves to the beat of jazz. People are genetically inferior, or they're culturally crippled, or they're socially deprived. How come God couldn't make everyone one color? Like tan. I wish I'd fucked a black broad before I got married. I could really feel 400 years of oppression and anger in every pelvic thrust. I can smell horny across an ocean. <sighs> Not all women. Good for you, man. Good for you, good for you. Just the hot ones. Hello. Oprah. You're not allowed to go down on me for one month. No, Judy, Don't please. Don't make me take away your masturbation privileges. Yeah, I'm horny too, babe. Hey, Chowman, come on down here. Well, you want to exercise my dominance. Scaring I'm getting a patriarchal urge. Look out for number one. Set your sights on the stars and the sun. Look out for number one. You gotta push a little hard. Push a little hard. Yeah, yeah. Don't mind me. Just keep doing what you're doing. We're a team. We work together. I don't know if you were paying attention. <laughs> I wasn't. Please, God damn it! Just one more drink! I'll call off your tits with a knife, you bitch! Five whiskeys. That's breakfast on the river. Yo, you have to clip it, Maze. Clip what? A fucking tiger? What are you talking about? It's not that hard. Just chop, chop, boom, out. Wow, Maze has a really hard job. <laughs> this is going to be the worst episode we've ever done. My people don't give a ding-dong diddly about what flag fly over Hawaii. You bore me, Fury. Where is the Mikro film? He's nothing but a bag of meat and flesh. Why didn't they just name him Spaghetti Lasagna? Fuck, this movie's two hours long? Not the whole thing. This is like the John Gruden emails of movies. Do you like ducks? Or a trench coat full of bees flying around? Like, that would scare me. Bees are cool. That's a duck, man. No, I get it. Coolio. You're the devil's baby mama. I didn't lie, Annie. I just didn't tell you certain things. Don't play no reindeer games with me. An American ninja. What are you talking about? There's no such thing. gotten rich off of the people in this town. <laughs> you bet your ass I have. And I'm gonna get richer. Coglin's Law. Go into incredibly descriptive details of the story so we all know. Oh man, I wish I had better notes. Have you ever had such a pile of shit? Once I get a DVD player, I'm gonna watch Gallo Walkers once a day. Come here and give me a squudge. You know what to do from here, internet. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let me Google how to open quick time. Justice is blind. It's got space dementia. But it can be hurt. Time to find out exactly what this ooze can do. Pull the fucking rabbit out of your dick and phobe. I'm Temecula's newest hard on dog. Hey, looky here. Why don't we eat us a few thousand beers? You can tell me what's buzzing in the big bad city. Come on, yeah! I ah! Look out for number one. Fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out. Welcome to Cinephobe. The podcast. We break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's me and Al Hassan. That's Anthony Mays. Listen to us on Spotify. 
or you'll never see giant popos again. That's right. Spotify is where you can leave a comment. It's where you can vote in the poll. Mm. For instance, in the all the makings no. episode CT5. Who won the fight? 71% say Zach Harper won the fight. How? How? You fought yourself. No, you know what? I know how. I know how. You fought yourself? No, because I was loud and all of these all, a lot of these people voting yes are the type of people that when people start getting loud, they have PTSD or some shit. It's like, oh, my God. So here's the interesting thing. They're your people when they vote for you to have won something. No, I wouldn't say so. When you don't get that vote, they're pussies and they're afraid of loud noises and stuff. No, I'm going to tell you because I'm going off of the comments. Like, I would say all the anti amin comments, a strong 90, 10% of them, 10% of them were like, Yo, dude, you kind of overreacted, right? Which, fair. Kind of. 90% of them said, were like- I said one word. I said one word and no, you freaked the fuck out. I said you, the word it, unbelievable and you freaked the fuck- You said it with like so smarmy and so- I said, I said, a, I said you, unbelievable. That's no, no, how like, I said it. No. And you, you freaked say, you, the fuck you, out. You said, you said it. You, you know what you were doing. But anyways, <laughs> the 90% <laughs> wasn't about overreacting. It was like, oh, yelling. I had to turn it off. I was so scared. I didn't even finish that. Oh, shut up, bitch. How about that? Who said that? Shut up, bitch. No one said that. Dude, mad people said that. A lot of people did say that it made them uncomfortable and talked about. Why? The parents fighting and. This is the thing I don't understand, right? All right. And by the way, Zach, before, before you say, also, people checking in on us. Are you guys okay? Legitimately thinking this is the end of the pot. <laughs> let's say. You friendless buffoons. Let's say we were legitimately mad at each other in a way that carries over into other things, right? To real life. <laughs> let's pretend that was the case. Yes. What the fuck? You think that that's going to end this podcast? Anyone that's like, oh, I was uncomfortable. I don't know if this is the case. I, I genuinely didn't see a lot of it, but I saw all of it. If it was like on behalf of you shouldn't yell, is that like, I'm good. People yelling at me does not bother me. No, dude. They thought legit. This is the end of the world. You could yell in my, it will never bother me. That doesn't do it. <laughs> yes, that's the problem. <laughs> what? That's exactly the problem. Now you're yelling. Don't yell on the podcast. You're completely <laughs> unbothered and unfazed by it. It doesn't affect you at all. It only makes you no double down more. It only makes me more powerful. I mean, it says that people's tears are his PEDs. People yelling at me are my PEDs. Yeah. It doesn't do anything to me. And to be honest with you guys, yes, I was legitimately mad but also i understand as soon as zach doubled down i understand oh this is good you know where this is going yeah i know this is good because he's gonna do the thing that naturally does infuriate me but me calming yeah. down <laughs> isn't good what's good is me continue to go crazy <laughs> and then i knew also at some point it was gonna flip i didn't know when yeah <laughs> I just knew at some point i'm gonna talk calm and zach is gonna say yelling at me <laughs> That's the point of the show, isn't it? <laughs> Mark said, best series finale ever, and this is my favorite comment. Zadim said, sorry, Maze, but I would rather be on the plane with Green Lantern's dad <laughs> than listen to another unedited bingo Amin rant, ass off for Zach's Amin impression, do boondock says you cowards. See, like, that motherfucker's a bitch, man. Whoa, oh, Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> also had Josue Hernandez say, all I can think of this is that Amin is 1,000% a bitch. Yeah, fuck you, Josue. Jos what the fuck is Josue, oh, man? Oh, Spell oh, your name right. Oh, Get the fuck out of here. Josue? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Ope meter. Make sure you check it out, CT5, on the feed. <laughs> Will it end the pod? Will it not? That's only one way to find out. Leave your CT5 <laughs> suggestion and your CT5 list. Make sure you sign up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings. You get a lot of stuff. Episodes early, ad free episodes, mm. re Washington, live events, past and present mm. and future. Extended cold opens. Mm. It's frozen. It's long. And we talked about giant popos today. So many times. <laughs> Access to the Discord. OG podcasts. OG podcasts, yes. Some basketball talk from the gang. Mm -hmm. That's there too. The gang, the posse. Yep. And be sure to check out the at Cinephobe Pod YouTube. Mm. That's where you can watch the entire CT5, all of Amin's crazy eyed expressions when he gets upset. Oh, man. That's where you can watch 
the full interview with Anthony Chicago Hall from the Blue Chips episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. How great was that, man? Obviously, that happened a decade ago. Mm -hmm. But rewatching it today, oh, man, that was so much fun. Great interview. He really explored the space, too. So it's a good visual product because he's showing us things on his wall. He's getting up and leaving. He's impersonating Nick Nolte. You need to see it. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Ask an info pod on YouTube. If you have a submission, submit it. Reminder, needs to be 40% or lower on the Rotten Tomatoes audience or critic score. All right. Recently, Mean gave us a fully loaded Lexus that is blue chips. I had us amble up some train tracks with the commuter maze turned us into some party girl hookers down under with Hurricane Smith. Is that what happened? <laughs> I think so. Now it's time for Amin to keep this 2024 canonizing. We're almost done. <laughs> by picking the 2007. That's a hell of a slogan right there. <laughs> Canonize 2024. It's almost over. We're almost done. I'm telling you, like I have hundreds of other movies I want to get to. Hundreds? It's hard, man. You don't have hundreds? You haven't even picked 70 movies yet. Settle down a little bit. Hundreds. The 2007 comedy crime sport. Balls of Fury. Yep, sports comedy. Crime? Yes, crime. What's the crime? It's centered around a crime. The reason we're there in the first place. It's running guns. Oh, yeah. The yeah. FBI's involved. Made out of clear plastic? Yeah. Polymer. Cool guns. Balls of Fury stars Dan Fogler, Christopher Walken, and George Lopez. Stars my man, Balls of Fury. <laughs> it sure does. Balls of Fury stars Balls of Fury, who is no, a no, repeat no. offender. That stars Balls of Fury. Balls of Fury stars my man, Balls of Fury. Yeah, my man. Balls of Fury... Stars Amin's man, Balls of Fury, yes. who is a repeat offender for Good Luck Chuck. I wish I knew how to quit you. He was in School for Scoundrels and Slippery Slope in 2006, this movie in Good Luck Chuck in 2007, and then Kung Fu Panda, Horton Hears a Who, and The Marconi Bros in 2008. He's in the Fantastic Beasts franchise. He also won the 2005 Tony Award for Best Actor in the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. He took that theater success and he said, you know what? I'm going to make good luck Chuck and Balls of Fury. Wait. He seems like a theater kid. He won a Tony Award? Yeah, man. Color me impressed oh. because I thought he was just some fat clown. 25% of an he got. He's not 50%? He didn't win an Oscar for this movie? I don't know. We have to get to the trivia. My man, Balls of Fury. Christopher Walken is a four-time repeat offender for Envy, Gigli, and Man on Fire. I wish I knew how to quit you. He was in Click, Man of the Year, and Fade to Black in 2006. This movie and Hairspray in 2007 and then $5 a day in 2008. I forgot about him in Man on Fire. Then I remembered his wife in that movie and I remembered him in Man on Fire. George Lopez, a repeat offender for Valentine's Day. Forgot we did that. Oh, that's right. He was in The Spy Next Door and 120 episodes of The George Lopez Show. Now, Zach, the Valentine's Day episode, I've gone up and down the Spotify and the Apple podcast list. I, I don't see it there. Where can I access the Valentine's Day episode? I mean, you fool. If you're a Patreon subscriber, patreon.com slash count the dings, we, for centuries, were doing Patreon-exclusive holiday episodes. Oh, wow. This was one for, you guessed it, St. Patrick's Day. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. You can check that out in the archive, which is very available. How? If you're a Patreon subscriber. Patreon.com slash Count the Dings. Oh. George Lopez is also in Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Racist. Pizza in a boat? Not really in the pup star universe, but, you know, someday. <laughs> you guys went opposite directions on that response. We also get Maggie Q, James Hong, and Terry Crews. Maggie was in Rush Hour 2, Mission Impossible 3, and the Divergent franchise. You remind no, me of a very no, young no, Jim Carrey. No, oh, no absolutely no, not. So you're telling me there's a chance. Who are you talking to? Somebody stop me. Mi Mission Impossible 3 revived the franchise, bro. You're not going to. Yeah, you're not going to do that. Didn't revive her career because after 73 episodes of Nikita, Priest and Divergent, haven't really heard from her. The fourth Die Hard? Yeah. Hello. Said after that. You don't get to be the next Jane Carey. Yes, you do. If you've been in all these bangers. No, that's exactly the point. No, 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 no. The next Jim slash Jane Carey is they put you in these things and there's expectation you're going to blow up. Yeah. But then your career goes nowhere. That's exactly what happened. No. What are we talking about? Why would your dad? Maggie Q was in Designated Survivor. Everyone loves that show. Yeah, exactly. Everyone? Hong is a repeat offender four times with RIPD, Golden Child, and Tango and Cash. I wish I knew how to quit you. Cruz is also a four-timer with Street Kings, Clip It Maze, and getting shot. I don't know. <laughs> 
Soul Plane and White Chicks. Clip what? A fucking murder? <laughs> what are you talking about? I wish I knew how to quit you. Another four-timer, Robert Patrick. Yeah. Last Action Hero, Poison Rose, and Honest Thief. Edric Bader from Office Space, Napoleon Dynamite, 233 episodes of The Drew Carey Show, and the Pup Star franchise. Oh, no. This is his first cinephile appearance? Yeah, somehow his first episode... He's also fantastic in Veep. Oh, he's so good in Veep. And he's really good in Pamela Adlon's show, Better Things, as her gay best friend. Aisha Tyler from Archer and Criminal Minds. And? The only black love interest on Friends. And? The Soup. Thomas Lennon, repeat offender for Out Cold and Taxi. I wish I knew how to quit you. Thomas Lennon, man. <laughs> That's dude. Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa, repeat offender for Twins. He's also Shang Tsung in 95 Mortal Kombat. Yeah, but not... Annihilation, so not canon. He's also in the 2001 Planet of the Apes. Yes, he is. Soldier Boys with Michael Dudikoff. Genghis Khan Conquers the Moon, which is a short. I wonder what role he played. I mean, you seem confused there by Michael Dudikoff. He's the American Ninja. No, no, he's not. American Ninja Steve James. Toby Huss, repeat offender for RIPD, and he was Charlie the limo driver on Curb. He's in a lot of stuff. He's in a ton of stuff, yeah. He was a voice actor for King of the Hill, Jerry Maguire, Bedazzled. Seven-time repeat offender, Man. David Keckner from The Goods, Drillbit Taylor, Waiting, Dukes of Hazard, Semi-Pro, and Out Cold. I wish I knew how to quit you. He's really creeping up there. He might be... Mount Rushmore territory after not much longer. Wow. Carrie Kenny from Reno 911 and repeat offender for Wet Hot American Summer. That's Trudy, right? From Reno 911. Yep. And role models, McLovin's mom. She's so funny to me. All about Steve. Pat Oswalt, repeat offender for Taxi and Blade Trinity. 179 episodes of King of Queens. I always forget that. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, man. Jim Rash from Community. Repeat offender for The Slam and Salmon. David Proval, repeat offender for Smoke and Aces. Masi Oka, repeat offender for A Long Came Holly. Clip it, Maze. Think about today instead. What? I'm playing Jesus. That's my song. I know it's your song, but I felt something and I decided to go with it. But, but you're playing Judas. Judas. All right, look, here's the deal. I'm the star of the show, okay? So if I decide to bust out a solo, do me a favor and give me the freedom to rock out. Brandon Malel, repeat offender for Master Disguise. Steve Little, repeat offender for Accepted. Brandon Malel is Blazer from Dodgeball. Oh. <laughs> Blade. Blazer. Blazer. Cathay Shim, repeat offender for The Watch. Eugene Choi, repeat offender for Double Impact. Daryl Chan, repeat offender for Jade. Paul Edney, repeat offender for Beer Fest and Battleship. Ryan McGonagall, repeat offender for Beer Fest. Gotta go with the twins. Balls of Fury was directed by Robert Ben Garant. Sure was. RBG directed Reno 911 Miami, Hell Baby, and 38 episodes of Reno 911. He also wrote this movie with Thomas Lennon. They created the state. Reno 911. Wrote The Pacifier, Let's Go to Prison, Herbie <laughs> Fully Loaded, Night at the Museum, and Repeat Offender for Taxi. Don't say file. And the Baywatch. Not the Baywatch that Gigli wanted to go to. Different the Baywatch. You sure? Well, it was an updated <laughs> version. Synopsis. For Balls of Fury, down and out former professional ping pong phenom Randy Daytona is sucked into a maelstrom when FBI agent Ernie Rodriguez recruits him for a secret mission. Randy's determined to bounce back and win and to smoke out his father's killer, Archfiend Fang. Archfiend? That's what it says. Hmm. Synopsis is doing way too much there. It is. Tagline, a huge comedy with tiny balls. Tiny popos. That's, <laughs> doesn't work that way. <laughs> I couldn't find a budget for this movie. Yeah, me neither. Suspicious. It had to have been expensive because of all the CGI of the ping pong balls, right? Well, I was going to say it made 41.1. I'm assuming that means it made money. Yeah. Not a lot, but I don't think it was a bomb, right? Christopher Walken isn't cheap. Neither is Tony Award winner Dan Fogler. The budget for Dodgeball was $20 million. It had to cost more than Dodgeball. No, I bet it's about that because that's got a bigger cast. Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, you know. Yeah, I suppose. Before we jump to this movie, you listen to the rest of this podcast. Balls of Fury is available on Max. The one you watch? Balls of Fury receives 21% on 131 reviews from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, 33% from the audience on over 250,000 ratings. I mean, like the positive or the negative reviews. Kind of curious to see why everyone hated it. Give me the negatives, Zach. Fucking scroll. Yeah, sir, rearrange this shit. Stop being a pessimist. 
It's half empty. Jeff Bayer of the Scorecard Review. Bayer, Bayer, Bayer. Comedians like Will Ferrell, Jack Black, and Ben Stiller can get away with lesser material because just looking at them can elicit laughs. Dan Fogler is not in that category. Um, excuse me, that's Tony Award winner, my man Balls of Fury to you, <laughs> sir. What the fuck does that mean? Like, oh, do you just look at them and they laugh? That's such a fucking... He has no credibility, is what it means. Yeah. No, no. They couldn't get Jack Black, is what it means. Mm -hmm. This critic has no credibility. How about that? Jim Hall of Film 4. Kids in the hall. Cut a ping pong ball in half, draw a large black dot in the center of each... And then carefully insert around your eye sockets. You'll raise more laughs than this film manages. Oh, I get it. Susan Granger of SusanGranger.com. Danny Granger. Granger Danger. Granger, the one you trust. It's like a Saturday Night Live skit stretched out to a cheesy, mind-numbing 90 minutes. I gotta have more ping pong, baby. Kamal the Diva Larswell of Three Black Chicks Reviews. Kamal's not a... Never mind. Oh. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> Go see something else. Okay. Abby Bernstein of If Magazine... Do the voice? Yes, it's racist and homophobic, but those are actually secondary concerns. Mainly, it's just not funny. There's no reason to pick on Balls of Fury unduly, but unless you are a diehard fan of any of the parties involved, there's no reason to see it. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, Abby Bernstein can forgive racism and homophobia. She can't forgive it not being funny. You know what? While I don't agree with her assessment, I do agree with her philosophy. I can't overlook homophobia and racism. We know. If it's funny. Or even if it's not. It's like that 30 Rock clip I sent you guys. Yes. <laughs> it's literally both of those things in one. Listen to me, okay? And please, believe what I'm saying. I truly don't like you as a person. Can't one human being not like another human being? Can't we all just not get along? Liz, I wish it could be like that. And and maybe someday our children or, or our children's children will hate each other like that. But it just doesn't work that way today. So what you're saying is any woman that doesn't like you is racist. No, 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 no. Some women are gay. Willie Waffle of WaffleMovies.com. Willie or won't he? He's waffling. Relies on so many kicks and blows to the crotch, you might think you're watching some sort of strange DVD mommy and daddy keep hidden in the bottom of the dresser drawer with a weird leather mask. <laughs> Willie, what have you been up to? I got a lot of questions. It's in the dildo drawer in Amos and Andrew. How about the dildo drawer from this other movie that we saw recently where- Hurricane Smith, last week. It looked like a finger, yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't like that. It's tapered to be like a shoehorn. Oh. Thousands of years of evolution. Yeah. <laughs> hey John, that's weird. That glass looks half full to me. Wow. Now that you mention it, it is half full. Matthew Turner of View London. Matty T. Balls of Fury isn't quite as funny as it thinks it is, but there are some good gags and it's worth seeing for Christopher Walken's performance. I disagree. Eric Lurio of Entertainment Insiders. The last must-see comedy of the summer. I don't have the energy to go look up the list. Move on. Cam Williams. <laughs> I didn't look it up because I thought you would. Cam Williams of AALBC.com. A breakout role for Dan Fogler, who comes across as a combination of John's <laughs> Belushi and Candy, exhibiting the former's unbounded enthusiasm and the latter's ever endearing charm. Just remember to check your brain at the box office. I think Dan Fogler is our next Jim Carrey, right? A hundred percent. Fred Topple of Can Magazine. Can? Can Magazine? Can Magazine. Like the film festival? No. C-A-N. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Film noir. Thank God somebody <laughs> remembers how to do comedy. It's really simple. If you're doing really silly things, you have to play them totally straight. It's the only way it works. Yeah, pretty much. Kurt Loder of MTV. The legend. Could a movie that mixes table tennis, spies, and kung fu action star anyone else but Christopher Walken? Probably not. He was not the most important casting in this movie. No. Bill Gibran of Pop Matters. Oh, Bill, you Gibrani. Right. You guessed it. It is Enter the Dragon. With dorks. Yes. Two user reviews. User TM, four out of five stars. <laughs> no one's calling anybody a TM. Underrated. If it was a big name in the lead role instead of Dan Fogler, this would be a sleeper quotable classic. That's no disrespect to Dan Fogler. He nailed it. So did the movie. Expect lowbrow humor. And this delivers plenty of laughs. And then blank user, four out of five. I think this movie is pretty funny. It's my opinion. Like it or lump it. Like it or lump it. Yeah. Newest segment on NBA radio. <laughs> Not gonna lump it. What's up with take a hike? We need to bring that one back. Oh, we gotta do take a hike, yeah. We'll get a means first note, May's first note, and my first note after these messages, unless patreon.com slash count the dings. Ad free, baby. 
Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive, sought after, rare, and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive, sought-after, rare, and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. Amin, what is your first note? Randy Daytona. CT5 names. Mmm. Yeah. Okay. I like that name a lot. Randy Daytona is a great name. Maze, what is your first note? Clip all of what we do in the shadows. Jackie Daytona. <laughs> Same note, too, in a minute. I now go by the name of Daytona. Jackie Daytona. And I'll tell you something. Jackie Daytona's life, it ain't so bad. Not bad at all. My first note, I do not remember if I liked this movie or didn't like it when we did it for Mad Dog. I just remember I'm awful at ping pong. Awful? I hit it too hard. <laughs> right away. We get a flaming ping pong ball with the title card and it cuts the Olympics in Seoul, Korea, 1988. Oh, with the Olympic theme, that's not cheap. Mm -mm. They had to pay a shit ton of money for that. 1936, Jesse Owens. 1960, Cassius Clay. And now in 1988, the name on everyone's lips, U.S. table tennis champion, Randy Daytona. This is where I said, Mays, better load up that Jackie Daytona clip. Fire it up. When you're Jackie Daytona, you can do whatever you want because you change lives. Jackie Daytona really inspires me. Broadcast position from Jim Lampley. You've seen him in Sports Illustrated, RIP. You've seen him on the Cinnamon Toast Crunch Box. You may even own his McDonald's collector's glass. With Grimace. Grimace, ass off. <laughs> also, repeat offender from a means timeline. <laughs> the golden boy who iced Iceland in round one. Yeah, coach. <laughs> checked off. Czechoslovakia in round two. That was checked off. <laughs> Exposition montage of him growing up over the years with Robert Patrick. He's bouncing a ping pong ball off a fridge. He's got a lucky Def Leppard paddle. He's won over 200 amateur matches. Is ping pong an up term? Is that a bingo word? It kind of feels like it is. Table tennis is what they call it now officially. And I don't know if that's because ping pong seems horribly, horribly racist. It's a good question. It does feel that way. Or is it racist? To think that that's racist term, mm. you know? Ah, uh, yes. That's how they get you. White man's burden right there. Oh, who are you telling? Unbelievable, <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, I was that not on the soundboard. Come on, that's got to be. Zach, to be fair, how big is that fucking soundboard? I don't care. Kick anything else off. I'll add another page of just fucking <laughs> Lewis Pinnock and Norb. Is that what you guys want? All them years in the factory, all that time I put in, and I'm the fucking delivery boy. Dad does the quarter trick behind the ear with the ping pong ball. He's wearing a shirt with his son's pick on it, holding the paddle. Sergeant Pete Daytona, the U.S. Marines. <laughs> Randy, you're only 12 years old, and already they're saying your name will go down among the greatest ping pong players ever to take up the sport. He doesn't know the other great ping pongers. Right offhand, I don't know what those names are. 
Randy, the eyes of all America and indeed the entire world will be on you tonight. <laughs> Cut to the bar. Pedro Hornies from Out Cold, where we've got <laughs> soldiers and Asian ladies. They all have handmade Randy signs. Yep. That's the entire world right there. Ron and Nancy Reagan. The throat goat. Tuning in at 245 a.m. Chinatown. <laughs> he enters to Rock of Ages. Crowd is going insane. TV producer makes sure he's ready to say, I'm going to Disneyland. Dad walks up. Think I'd miss this. We see a mysterious Asian man in the stands nodding at the T-1000. That's literally his credited title. That is his credited name. Yeah. Mysterious Asian. It's the Big Daddy Mars of this movie. Randy's dad definitely put money on this with prize picks Asia. <laughs> dad, you promised. Try not to think about it, okay? Carl Wolfstag from East Germany is his competition. The Germans. Thomas Lennon, ask the fuck off. Ass off, Louis Pinnock. In one full swoop. Intense as fuck. So intense. He struts out so fucking energetic. He has the tearaway pants, furiously rips them off. To the singlet, the East German singlet. The fan in the crowd with his face painted with the German flag. That's Stevie. Oh, is it? Yeah. Stevie from East Bound and Down. It's also one third of an ope with the black up top. Yeah, it's like the Chiefs fan in profile. <laughs> They go toe to toe. Randy says, made the best man win, huh? Carl spits in his hand. And then elbows the shit out of him. I will destroy him. Eat that kraut. <laughs> Randy puts gum under the table. We get some intense back and forth. That's a lot of gum. Randy gets distracted by his dad walking away from the match. Breathtaking intensity of the ping pong action. Did Lampley just call him Carl Manslaughter? Same note too, Zach. I don't know what that was. I looked up his last name. It doesn't translate to anything. I started laughing. I said, move over, Randy Daytona. CT5 names has just been updated. But as I searched through the credits and everything, like there's no other reference to him as manslaughter. It never comes back either. You get a lot of saves with lobs happening by Randy. Oh, is that what we got? I thought we got a lot of CGI. Well, there's heavy, heavy CGI. Can we clarify? They're not actually playing ping pong. No, of course not. The amount of skill level they would have to happen to have. We see his dad with the mysterious Asian man. Carl smashes it. Randy has to backpedal to get the ball farther back. Back. The crowd rises in anticipation. He stretches. He stretches. Trips over the barrier. Oh, shit. Ah, shit. Ah, shit. Crowd boos. Lampley, ass off. Oh, for sure. He's great. These broadcasters in these roles are usually awful. Lampley. Oh. Brought the heat. Thank God there was a caster after that. You see these broads. That's not the way you talk to a broad, you understand? Randy's unable to finish. T-1000 gets taken. Taken away, camera on Randy. He says he's going to Disneyland. Crowd laughs at him. Why isn't he able to finish? Concussions weren't invented yet. It's true. His head should be fine. Shang Tsung takes his Pop. away. Says Mr. Fang does not extend credit. He's even on the screen in Times Square. And we get a close-up of Ronald Reagan looking unhappy. Oh, Ronald Reagan, ass off. We see a shadowy figure smoking a pipe behind a beaded curtain. They pull out a massive knife. T-1000 is on the Korean newspaper. Oh. Gentlemen, time is money. Chop, chop. It's not that hard. Newspaper exposition from USA Today. Repeat offender USA Today. Maze, how many times now? It's on a tear. It's unbelievable how many times we've seen USA Today in the last 50 years of cinephobe. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles here in Korea is Reno's golden boy was humiliated in the semifinals. And if he lives to be 100, he'll never live down that Disneyland line. They have a picture of him that just says losers. Yeah. Little Randy is a huge disappointment. If he returns to America, a life of shame. 19 years later, Reno, Nevada. Thank you. Zach, we good? Love it. I did like that they had the Korean subtitle translating the USA Today headline. Yeah. Randy's staring into a mirror, has a pic of his dad in the dog tags. Pop. Two tickets to paradise is playing. Keckner's on stage with two showgirls and a bird. The showgirls are so disinterested. Keckner's got a feathered hair wig and a tasseled leather outfit. He's looking like Donny Osmond. He looks great. And he's singing his ass off. Yeah, the bird can say, I got. I got. And then Keckner finishes the line. Yeah. <laughs> bird's kind of ass off, man. I could have used more bird. Depressing old people eating dinner, not paying attention. That is authentic Reno, baby. Yes. This is how Zach imagines Reno. Every time Zach shits on Reno. It's how Reno is. Is it? Isn't it? I've been to Reno. I don't remember it looking like that. It's the worst. It is a hellhole. And they spent their entire time lampooning Reno and Reno 911. So I trust them on this. Yes. Oh, shit. Does it say the pepper mill on the table? I actually love going to the pepper mill in Vegas. I have a tradition of going there. They did not have a casino. The Reno one looks way shittier. Yeah. But I do love his starter satin jacket that he wears throughout the movie. Yeah. That's going on my 
CT5 outfits list. He gets introduced as the ping pong wizard. Nobody reacts. Cockatoo says, Randy Daytona. How's everybody feeling this afternoon? Randy Daytona. It's him hitting a shitload of balls against a folded table. We get some black light action. All right. I did laugh at how is everyone feeling this afternoon? Afternoon, yeah. Just to further hammer home how low he is. Lunch buffet. We get a smattering of applause. He's off a drum, blindfolded. <laughs> this is the most offensive steel drum scene since D. You too. She brings out the blindfold and he's like, no. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to work. I just want to bang on these drums all day long. Am I right? <laughs> Fat guy in the crowd farts. Goatee man gets up. A volunteer! Starts banging the ball off him. Bouncing balls off his face. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was just going for more cheese and mac. Who calls it cheese and mac, honestly? People in Reno. Oh. The guy collapses. Carrie screams <laughs> backstage. Kackner pulls him aside, tells him, We're in the biz <laughs> to bring the bewonderment of live theater to these people so they will stay for the loosest slots on the strip. Penny slots? Well, oh. not to give them a heart attack, Randy. Sorry, it'll never happen again. I know because you're fired. Get your stink! Out of my theater. Trudy comes over, says some agent was looking for Randy backstage. Maybe you missed the show. Thank you, Bethany. My name's Sarah. You kidding me? You called me Bethany for the past five years. It's fine. <laughs> That's so funny. George Lopez walks in. He's Ernie Rodriguez, FBI. Oh, God, I didn't mean to hurt that guy. How could I know he had a bad heart? Ernie thought it was part of the show. Until the paramedics showed up, I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> That's a good enough <laughs> nominee, guys. Guys. He's here to ask for Randy's help. He goes. FBI <laughs> needs him for a top secret mission. One that calls for a man of his unique skills. Oh. Now he's walking out. George says he's not kidding. He's FBI. Come on, man. You got a hidden camera on you? He's frisking him. He finds a gun. Ooh, fake gun and everything. Does a desk pop. <laughs> Two other agents come out of nowhere and pin him against the wall. Two other what? Agents. 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 Yes. Agent provocateur. He's scared against the wall. Ass off. He's actually pretty funny in this. He's not funny in Good Luck Chuck. He's a Tony Award winner. Ooh, Balls of Fury? Yeah, he's funny, man. Talk to HQ. Surveillance photos of a man behind an umbrella. It's Mr. Fang. That's the guy that killed my father. Pop. His face has never been photographed, but they have a sketch. Racist joke that it looks like George Takai. Well, it does look like George Takai. It's not him. We checked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. It's funny. About to make a major shipment to the U.S. What kind of a shipment? <laughs> what do you want from me? What do you want me to do about it? He says, what you were born to do. Fang is a ping pong fanatic. Played for the Chinese when he was a kid. Every five years brings the best to him in a high stakes tournament at a secret location. Invite only. We got a photo montage of Shang Tsung going to tournaments recruiting. See that gold paddle? That's the invitation. Randy's there. Take it in. All he has to do is play. There's a lot of exposition going on. He's invited a who's who of the international most wanted list. Something's going down. Here's the thing. You're bananas. I do matinee shows. I get introduced by a cockatoo. Oh, Zach gets introduced to a cock or two. <laughs> oh, shit, man. I mean, not phased by homophobia. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not if it's funny. George could offer anything in the government's power if he helps them out. You don't get it, man, do you? I don't compete anymore! Okay? And that's when I really checked out the Peppermill Silver Satin Jacket. It's not quite as good as the Watch Bingo Bomber Jackets, but it's close. Yeah. Gets into a fight with a plant on the way out. It's hilarious. George Lopez is extremely ass on to end this scene. <sighs> Caucasians. Caucasians. Randy goes to his dad's grave. Pop. Sorry about abbreviating the dates on the headstone. Numbers like $100 a pop. Apostrophes were free, so. 33 to 88 is fucking amazing. <laughs> he gets water dumped on him. The grave is below a water park slide. I love that the water from, is not the splash of a water slide, but literally just someone with a bucket of water dumping it on his head. Toby Huss is a groundskeeper with a rake, raking up exposition. What are you going to do? They sold the air rights to the cemetery. They sold air rights to the cemetery? Pretty okay water slide, though. Called Erie Canals. Guess it's themed. It's haunted. <laughs> Look out. More water hits Randy. He spits some out. Another bucket right over his head. Cut to a payphone. He's in. He busts out the paddle. Do we have a montage? Not really. There's a lot of half montages. All the makings. Cut to a regional tournament and pancake breakfast. He walks in. You can see Daryl Morey and Rondé Hollis Jefferson going hard in the background against Rick Carlisle and Dennis Schroeder. That's very summer league. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no Rich Cho? Racist. Oh, forgot about Rich Cho. Rich Cho won it, didn't he? No, it's always Daryl Morey. So at summer league, the organizer of summer league used to have like this charity ping, ping pong table tennis tournament. Anyone could enter, right? But it was a lot of NBA execs and players who would enter it. 
And, you know, there's some people going there just to have fun. Brent Barry one year, just out there having a laugh or whatever. Yeah. But then you get Daryl Morey showing up, and he literally looks like Patton Oswalt in this scene. He comes with the headband. The hammer. And he's got the sleeve, shorts, and he's out here sweating, like, going fucking hard as hell. Mm -hmm. And apparently he's really fucking good at it, too. He is really good, yeah. And, Zach, I stand corrected, Rich Cho as well was a pretty good table tennis player. Randy says, I love that smell. Good to be back on the circuit again, huh? Uh, I meant pancakes. Uh-huh. Love the smell of pancakes. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, that was all right. No? Oh, I like it. Ernie tells him he's here to win. Got a win here to get to state. The announcer lady calls him Andy before correcting to Randy. And he's got to play four-time conference champion, The Hammer. The pride, pride of, of Reno. Reno. Yes. <laughs> Massive six foot tall banner. He rips it down the middle. He can't break through it. So he's got to reach up to the top. It's Pat Oswalt in a boost mobile polo and shorts. <laughs> Otso. He mimes dumping out a glass. Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. Throat slash going down, <laughs> pouring out a glass. He's got safety goggles on. <laughs> Ernie funny. ADR. I'm still trying to figure out if it's a dude or a chick. Golden dumpster, man. He puts on a breathe right strip and hits the inhaler. George says, no mercy. They walk slowly to the table. Randy spinning his paddle. Gum under the table. Patton doesn't like that. Couple of five, five roundies ping ponging it up. Patton's getting a face massage. Before. Yeah. <laughs> Have your grandma pull the car around. Serves slow-mo after winking. Dramatic music builds. Cutting to Patton. Running out of the school sweaty with a tiny little trophy. Yeah. You dig it? Mmm. Tastes good. Reference. He's doing the shack. It's the tiny trophy that Stallone gave to Kip Purdue and Driven. 11 to 3? Told you I was rusty. Haven't competed in 19 years. Why don't you cut me some slack, man? Need some time to warm up. I understand what we're doing here, but it seems like maybe give up on Randy at this point for your top secret FBI mission. If he's going to get dusted by the hammer, <laughs> they got two weeks. Why didn't they recruit the hammer? Recruit the hammer. <laughs> no, he's good. The pride arena. They go to a Chinese restaurant. Okay. So they cut to Chinatown in San Francisco. Salute to all the old ladies around the world. I love you. <laughs> it's a real intersection of Grant street between clay and commercial, but then they randomly faked the background for some reason. Doesn't make sense. Wait, that looked like Atlanta to me. I know it's confusing. It's because venom drove by that same intersection. But then we're at Mr. Wong's Mushu Palace somewhere in LA, I guess. No, that's just a set. World's greatest ping pong instructor owns a takeout restaurant. School's upstairs. George Lopez says, this guy's blind, so let me do all the talking. And I laugh because it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yes. This guy's blind, so let me do all the talking. He never trains Guaylo. Who? Guaylo. Means round eye, gringo. Oh. You, man. I thought it meant Cobra formula. Guaylo's a known term, right? Like from other Kung Fu movies. I don't feel comfortable having this conversation. No? I just don't know. I'm not saying no. I just don't know. Was this movie the first time you ever heard the term Guaylo? Yes or no? Yes. Maze? I mean, I haven't heard it in a while if I've heard it in something else. Is it in Big Trouble in Little China? Did you learn of this term from Balls of Fury? That's what I'm asking you. I did not remember it before Balls of Fury, so sure. You guys are cowards. What do you mean you guys are cowards? I know what you're doing. You're doing, I'm not going to say the thing that might be. Well, if you're saying it's from Enter the Dragon, I've seen Enter the Dragon. Dragon, so I'm sure I knew it at that point, but it's not something mm-hmm. that entered my rotation, so I wasn't using it. It's Cantonese. So yes, it has refreshed my memory here. But what is that? What did that do? You saying it's Cantonese? Like, what does that mean? My man, the mailman. It's a real term that is used. Not doubting that. But you guys learned of it from Balls of Fury. Sure. I don't remember. Okay. Sure. You want me to know, like, when did you learn the term producer? I don't know. The Senate hearing excuses you. I get you. I get it. It feels like the term round eyes racist. To who? I actually think it's reverse racism to Asian people. Okay. How is, okay. Yeah. Stop Asian hate. Okay. Just stop Asian hate. Bearing in mind, I just listened to the Street Kings episode. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, don't. No. 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 They're free. They're free, I mean. No, no, no. <laughs> Numbers are a hundred bucks though. No. Oh my God. No. He's so racist in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is an avalanche of Asian hate. He's got such a smug look on his face while he's doing it. <laughs> oh my god. Randy waves his hand in front of Wong. How did you know that we were Guilo? Same way I could tell you you are 30 years old, too old to start training. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> pudgy. You are filled with self-doubt, and you use lady speed stick. Fogler is ass off hearing all this stuff and reacting subtly. It was on sale. (laughs) Cut down to the restaurant. 
He's got those meditation balls in his hand, twirling them around. Bow ding balls. He's getting reminiscent. Time for some Pong's position. Yo, Preston? Preston Myers, dude, what's going on, man? <laughs> Bang was my most gifted pupil. Uh, he played table tennis like the devil in short shorts, but he had expensive taste. He began to steal and extort. Turning my school of table tennis into a den of thieves. Ah, he said it. <laughs> huh. And when I cast him out, he joined the triad. He learned my brother Lei Ping in with him. When Lei Ping tried to go straight, he killed him. Lei Ping's daughter was less fatherless. Hello, exposition. Pop. Heavy. An avalanche of exposition here. Ernie gives Wong his word that they will nail Fang. I will help you, secret agent man. You will start training tomorrow, Randy. Bring all of your strength, your honor, and a check for three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars, haha! Get it. Wong leans over to Randy, calls him secret agent. Agent man, man, gonna tell him the truth. Your boy will not pull it off. We need a natural, something I can work with. And he knocks a teapot onto his lap. He tosses the bowding balls in the air. They ricochet around. Randy leans back, plucks them out of the air, and Ernie is impressed. I didn't like the recurring bit of him being clumsy and blind yes clumsy and blind i thought that was too heavy-handed it didn't need that it didn't add anything for me yeah it goes along with a lot of the dick kicking that's gonna happen soon enough i don't think there's that much dick kicking dick punching randy shows up to practice in shades and his sweet pepper mill jacket <laughs> it isn't the infamous randy daytona chewing gum vigorously how is disneyland did you meet dumbo uh -huh. guy in the foreground sits down and reveals maggie q training that's my niece, Maggie Wong, Mei Fei. She's playing four dudes at once. Lay <laughs> Ping, Poppy Talk, Double Elimination. Pop. So Maggie Q is winner of the Larry the Cable Guy Award for I play a character who has the same name as I do. Yes, absolutely. She answers the phone with her foot, keeps the game going. Watch the balls, not my boobs. And I'm like, oh. Maggie, I don't. No slide. What? No, no slide whistle there. She's taking the order on a pad while continuing to play. She'll give Randy hands-on training. Gives wax off a whole new meaning. Uh -huh. Wong pinches his balls with chopsticks. Rule one, Guilo. Then he goes back to eating with the same chopsticks. Yeah. Which is kind of gross. That's a running bit. I know. He's blind. Well, that's not blindness. That's someone who clearly doesn't. No, he's, he's blind. No, but he knew what the fuck he was doing. No, he's blind. <laughs> he's blind. Let me do the talking. Okay. Maggie backhands four balls at once, beats everybody. Everybody applauds. Guy crushes his paddle in frustration, wants to know what Whitey's doing there. That's Jason Scott Lee. She grabs a guy, tells him to calm down. They'll work on his backhand. He reaches behind her, grabs her ass. No, he grabs her zero roundy. Oh. I said, I wonder if Amin will notice a hint of cheeks. No, not, no hints. Hintless. <laughs> not even wearing a hint. <laughs> exactly. Not even wearing a roundy. He did the fucking title belt celebration for that? <laughs> no, I was doing the... <laughs> no, he's doing the beltless. Beltless. I know, but you just... <laughs> yeah. She puts him in an arm hold. He reverses it. She runs up the pillar, knocks him down. Just... He tells the other three guys to get her. She calls him table jockey, tough gal talk. TGT. None of these guys can touch her. She kicks two of their asses. One guy busts out a butterfly knife. Oh, love a good butterfly knife. Oh, so cool. Repeat offender. She has a paddle. She lands like Catwoman on the ping pong table. There's a spinning knockout with a paddle. What does she weigh? Like 40 pounds? Jason Scott Lee grabs her. She pulls down his shorts, kicks him to the ground. She does a scorpion kick. What? A soccer play where you... Nobody knows that. What's like a scorpion tail? Nobody knows what that is. It looks like a scorpion. I've described it. Like the two scorpions in... Exactly. 3,000 Miles to Graceland? Future callback. There we go. Randy grabs a coat rack. <laughs> George <laughs> warns them kick his ass. Guy stabs her paddle. She knocks him out, throws the knife near the crotch of the first guy. Randy runs over, meekly yells, who wants to go? She rips the coat rack from him, starts twirling at him like it's a bow staff. He's whimpering. And Maze, please clip him screaming. <laughs> screaming like David Wayans <laughs> in Blank Man. See note two. She pins him against the wall. Wong says her temper brings dishonor to his happy Mushu palace. Jason threatens Wong, teaching Guilo is forbidden. You will have to face the dragon. And he chopsticks him up the nose. Yeah. Throws him down an elevator shaft, an open elevator shaft. And then he keeps eating with them because... Because he's blind. He's blind, apparently. Yeah. It's just the four of them now training. He's smoking. Ping pong is not the Macarena. It takes patience. 
She is like the fine, well-aged prostitute. It takes years to learn her tricks. <laughs> she is cruel. Laughs at you when you are naked. <laughs> but you keep coming back for more and more. Why? Because she is the only prostitute I can afford. Golden Dumpster. So ass off. Yeah. We have a Kerry Washington situation. Oh, he's ass off being blunt. For sure, yeah. Crushing it. Randy hands over his paddle. Wong says he will practice with a wooden spoon. Impossible. There's no such thing. Nobody can practice with a wooden spoon. She does it right away. He can't return her serve. She knocks the spoon out of his hand. He falls fatly. He does fall fatly. Which is a recurring theme. Wong grabs a cricket. Randy's worried that he's got to eat that cricket. He says, in my hand, I hold a cricket. Randy snatches it immediately. He crushes it. The hell did you do that for? This is from the trailer. Who the hell said to take the cricket from my hand? Put it back. And then it's all smushed. It's my lucky cricket. Did you kill my cricket? <laughs> Nah. Nah. <laughs> you squished Lucky Cricket? No. No. Brandy's staring at Maggie as she does Tai Chi. What do you do when you're not here? So sorry. Don't speak English. But didn't I hear you speak English on the phone? You must be mistaken because I don't speak any English. I'm just trying to get better acquainted. I know what you're trying to get, table jockey. For as long as I can remember, guys have been in here with their hands all over me with your stupid come ons. Give me a hand with my balls, Maggie. Let me guess. You're not around girls much, or you probably wouldn't play ping pong, right? Yeah, well, I thought that your dad played ping pong. Do not compare yourself to my father. My father was a great man. I'm not. It's just a game. Not just a game. Ow. It is a proud tradition my family have devoted their lives to. Ow. You treat that tradition like a joke. Uncle says you have no honor. I say you have no shot. So turn off the charm. Table jockey. No! Oh! Table jockey keeps coming back. <laughs> Table jockey sounds like a... Oh! We get some poppy talk, some heavy fucking poppy talk here. Poppy talk has a big lead in the horseman horse race. Oh my God. She pulls his waistband back and snaps a paddle into his junk. We see a close up of Master Wong's sign. It's nighttime with a tagline by Zach Harper. If Mushu fits, wear it. Oh, it's a great line. Oh, they're going to say it's nighttime. Oh, <laughs> I can't get it up. Wong says he has to learn to build wrist strength, eye hand coordination, endurance. Oh, come on. I'm swatting flies now. Herc. You not hit flies. You hit bees. Drops the crate, runs up. And we got ourselves a bee movie, baby. Bee movies are back. Bees aren't like humans. They don't question or doubt. Bees don't lie. Oh, no, not the bees. Not the bees. What are the analytics? Five? Five? No. Way more than five. No, this is a big one. This puts Amin at four. <sighs> Tied with Zach. And I'm at three. Cut to him crying in bed. Bee stings everywhere. There are drums and drums of MSG in the meat locker. Halfway through his training, now comes the difficult part, the backhand. Maggie smoking serves past him. He's trying to backhand with the spoon. You must believe in yourself when no one else does. Like right now, for instance. Cut to the motel at night. Randy's having a bad dream, knocks over a lamp in his sleep. Dad! This is a new poppy talk drop when he wakes up yelling, Dad! <laughs> George wakes up, grabs his gun, immediately fires into the wall. Someone next door is dead. Oh, uh, that's right, man. I'm in Chinatown. <laughs> you, Juju. Of everything Juju said on the pod. Yeah. I gave it a little minga banga, and oh. the whole party started jumping, baby. Randy Daytona's rolls away scared. George Lopez says, oh, come on here. You want a desk pop? Always makes me feel better. <laughs> Are you really a fully licensed FBI guy? Time for some exposition. Hello, exposition. I fell asleep here. Nobody else would be caught dead on Operation Ping Pong. They don't expect us to catch Fang. They got 20 agents working other angles, man. I'm the backup plan. Join the company for action. Car chases, hang gliding, James Bond stuff, drinking martinis, saving girls from danger. Haven't worn a tuxedo since my goddaughter's quinceanera. The last five years, been at a desk typing. I'm up to 70 words a minute. When he does put the tuxedo on later in the movie, it's so funny. Him wearing the tuxedo with the little tie. With the bolo tie? Yes, it's such a great detail, man. Is it? Or is it a racist detail? Both. It can be both. <laughs> Remember, you can forgive racism. It can be racist if it's funny, I mean. Yeah, and it's funny. <laughs> Bone rings. He tells Maggie to slow down. Slow down in English. That's funny. Thankfully not in Spanish, though. Am I right, boys? <laughs> Slow down in Spanish. Yeah. Oh, yes. Bingo. Please supercharge Zach. What? For his own good. Isn't that what it is? No, it's not. It's not what... <laughs> Edit again. Maybe you'll get it the third time. The funny thing is... I thought it was... No. <laughs> <laughs> supercharge that. 
Diego. For sure. Oh, no, 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 no. San Diego. It's been trash. Oh yeah. Vandalized. Teaching outsiders is forbidden to find the elders. Now they're shutting us down. Maggie picks up the shattered picture of her pop and Mace. Pop? There it is. What's you bring in her <laughs> poppy talk? <laughs> we got two dragons of poppy talk right now. Long's been forbidden. That's racist to teach in Chinatown forever. <laughs> George said. FBI is going to find who did this. We're all looking for the guy who did this. On the wall it says, Eddie did this. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. I thought that was funny. Golden dumpster. We will settle this in our own way. It's not offensive to say that's what it is in Spanish. Oh, that's not offensive. Why are you coming back to that shit? Wilo, only you can restore our honor. Must go to the elders. Must face the dragon. Ernie says they don't have time for an ancient Chinese pissing contest. Need thanks scouts to see Randy win some trophies. I a foolish secret agent, man. Real ping pong is not played for trophies. It is played in the shadows in dark alleys and back rooms for hard cash and cheap ugly women if guaylo beats the dragon it will reach fang's ears i assure you george lopez has such a big face huge face yeah so much surface area maggie takes him to the lair of the dragon randy and maggie have an awkward goodbye she gives him her father's paddle Pop! i call this hey sweet maggie hi nice sweet nanny <laughs> no that doesn't qualify what between them two? Because they eventually, they eventually. Eventually, you think they do generate some tension? <laughs> are you sure about that? Yeah, Mace. What? Give them the look. The airport. <laughs> no. You guys are profiling here. I'm with the mean on this. <laughs> I'm not picking up a lot of tension between those two. Look at your allies. There's no way to win. <laughs> what? Me, Amin, and nice sweet, Annie. Liam Neeson? <laughs> All right. He says, I can't take this. He would have wanted you to have it. Take it. You're ready. It has defeated many enemies. She kissed them on the cheek. The dragon is the most feared table tennis player in all of Chinatown. They go down the stairs. Two guys are smoking while playing. Everyone's smoking. It goes quiet. Welcome to the underbelly of ping pong, where fortunes are won and lost. I'm exaggerating, of course, but you get my point. People bet on ping pong here. <laughs> I like that. Jason puts five bucks down on the table. He wants change because it's four dollars. Randy rips his tearaway pants and falls fatly. Falls fatly indeed. Guy comes up all tatted out, cracks his neck. Walks says, that's not the dragon. He opens the door. It's a little girl. Fiddler. Everybody's afraid of her. She puts her backpack in a locker. Walks says, remember, you suck when you're nervous. Thanks, master. First player to lead by three wins. Guaylo loses. Wong and his descendants are banished from Chinatown forever, and by extension, all of Orange County. Not the last Orange County joke. It was at that point where I realized we're in L.A. Well, they really threw me off with the shot of San Francisco Chinatown. She speaks Chinese. Guy translates. This serve no one can defend. No one has hit it back in five years of table tennis. Randy puts his gum under the table, returns it, wins the point. This upsets the dragon. She yells. She says, no fair. It's not fair. Well. Well, be careful. <laughs> be respectful. Be respectful indeed. <laughs> you guys both just bingo bomb the podcast for like two minutes. No, you're acting like a... Well, now, see, almost <sighs> tricked me into saying the bad version of it. You've already said the bad version. No. No. What? It's... <laughs> <laughs> you just did it again. I'm not saying the other one. Yeah, because people will be able to tell. What's the other one? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't ready. She says that wasn't the real no one can defend serve. This next one, this no one can defend. So watch out. She spins the ball in her hand. She hits it. He mashes a return again. With an extended moan. They start betting. She starts walking away from the table, then grabs a ball. And furious. Tries to sneak one by him. We have a volley back and forth. She hits it over the table and has lost. Randy starts yelling and celebrating. Clip it. Yes! I said yes! That is right! Am I right? Just say yes. Fine! Very Jack Black vibes. Oh, yeah, definitely. As he almost sings songs it, mm -hmm. like Def Leppard, I guess. He says, come on, little kid, don't be so hard on yourself. You got mad skills. She punches him right in the dick. And he runs off. The other guys celebrate Randy and lift him up, cheering triumphant music. Then they take him outside and throw him in the dumpster. Is that a film noir? They didn't come to whoop his ass. They're cheering. And then is it a film noir that they throw him in the dumpster? 
the golden dumpster. He pretends to be scared as they all surround him. Yeah. Ass off. Jason gives him his money, but blows his nose on it first. Unfortunately, it's covered in snot. Then he spits on him. George and Maggie congratulate him. Headlights are on them now. Aisha Tyler. Looking like a dominatrix. Just like a He-Man villain. Steps aside to reveal Shang Tsung. Mr. Daytona. Oh. You're Balls have been tempered in the fury of Hell's Dragon. He gets the golden paddle invite. Music stops. Shang Tsung comes back. He asks for directions to the freeway. Because yeah. it's funny. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Two blocks right at the Fat Burger. It's LA. Ah. Randy holds up the paddle triumphantly. Wong interrupts. What am I missing? Uh, we got the golden paddle. Because he's blind. We're back at the FBI building on Wilshire. Golden paddle has a riddle in Chinese. Maggie reads it. On the longest day, two hands reach toward heaven. We enter the clouds. Of course, when both hands reach up on a clock, that's noon. Longest day, Wednesday, nine letters. Enter the clouds. Gotta be an airfield. John Wayne Airport, private hangar there, owned by a Japanese corporation. Goes by the name Haiku Cargo. Starts counting the syllables. Check this out. Yep. 575. That's a haiku. Maggie's impressed. He admits it's on the back of the paddle in English. Golden dumpster. It's funny because when they open the case, the paddle is up Chinese out, right? Yeah. And so she reads it, and he's looking at it, and he can't see. That didn't sound great. Chinese up. It's up, Chinese out. Dick first. Sounded racist for some reason. All right, anyways. Maybe it's just coming from you. When she hands it to him, he flips it for like a half second like this, and then back up top. And then he pretends to know what it means and all that stuff. Yeah, that's really funny. Each player can bring a coach, a doctor, two carry-ons. The dean is named Goose. He's the tech expert. Mm -hmm. Stripped everything down. Homing device and transmitter to call for backup. Warns Ernie not to signal without proof. We don't want theories. We want them red-handed with hard evidence so we can put them away for good. Randy thinks they'll put the homing device in the heel of a shoe or a tube of toothpaste. And we have to sneak this in the old-fashioned way. What's the old-fashioned way? They look around. Golden dumpster of everyone looking at each other. Jim Rash is ass the fuck off. And then they cut back to Randy. They tell her to look at them like, what am I missing here yeah. from these knowing glances? <laughs> cut to Randy and Ernie limping gingerly because it's up their ass, guys. Lopez... After a while, gets used to it. I don't know. It's called ass on. Okay, got it. Up ass. Up ass on. Oh, Wong walks into a fence. Yeah, it's funny. Because he's blind. Yeah. That's not funny, but George saying, what's the stick for? <laughs> That's funny. That's a golden dumpster. Yeah, yeah. Maggie hugs Randy hard. He says, never hug a man with a million bucks worth of hardware up his crack. Uh -huh. That did not cost a million dollars, Randy. Hong yells to go ahead and kiss her already. She kisses him. Now she's mounted him. Hi, sweet Maggie. No, come on, man. There is zero tension between them. What are you talking about? You're saying that because he's super ugly. That's his man, Balls of Fury. He's exceptionally ugly, though. Yes, but also because she kisses him like this. He's disgusted. You can tell from her face. No, don't do that. Like Norm. <laughs> Before he says goodbye. Arr. Pull back. She's wrapped around his waist. Yeah. Pretty impressive. They untangle. He walks carefully to the plane. She must have some really long legs. Because he's fat. Because he's fat. There you go. They move past the plane into a charter bus. Ah, uh, misdirection. Bus driving montage. Randy struggles to get off the bus. Somewhere in Central America, Zach. I would have liked a little bit of how long did it take? It came up very quickly and towards the bottom of the screen. Almost didn't see it, so. Need it prominent. Mm -hmm. Now they're on a canoe going under a wooden bridge. Camera pans over to a Chinese style architecture poking out of the treetops. Into a compound. A courtyard with countless guys in red outfits training, playing ping pong. They're still walking gingerly. We've got. Geisha's contortionist with fire. Shang Tsung is giving Fang a cryptic intro. Yeah. A man who sold the dragon its fire, stole it back, and sold it again to the crypts. Yeah. The man who sold the dragon his fire. The man who did it. I thought he was going to do one of those so I could say. The, the Count, Count of, of Monte Fisto. <laughs> I got ready and then... When I realized it wasn't that, I kind of got disappointed. Four sumo guys carrying a box with a curtain. A hand emerges. Mahogany takes it. Out comes Walken with a crazy hairstyle. Film noir? Film noir for sure. Film noir, even though it was in the trailer as well. He says, how's my collar? Man, we were way off with George Takai. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's funny. Right. And he walks to the middle of the stage to do a tight five. Okie dokie, artichoke. First of all, I know getting here was the commute from hell. I have to be a smidge off the beaten track here. Now, ping pong, or as the Chinese say, ping pong. Sport of emperors and bandits alike. I have assembled today for your entertainment pleasure the most talented table tennis athletes from around the globe. Legends, everyone. We have last year's North American champion and holder of the Canadian Cup. 
Mr. Freddy Fingers Wilson. That's Terry Crews spinning yeah. the ball. Oh, it's a means guy. Four-time Australian champion, Mr. Wedge McDonald. He crushes a ball. Cutie. This is all intros position, just like over the top where we're wow. learning about all the contestants. From Japan, Mr. Yukito Nagasaki. Cuts the ball in half. My personal odds-on favorite from the 88 games, possibly the greatest player ever to emerge from the West. Ernie looks at Randy, who's smirking, starts getting up. Came out of retirement to be here. It's an honor to have him. He's back and he's bad. The one and only Carl Wolfstag. Film Schwarz. Crazy fucking eyes from Thomas Lennon. Oh my God. <laughs> Insane. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we meet again. Oh, the years have not been kind to you. I will not be either. He hisses it. I will not be either. He comes out with his hands up. And then when he sees fucking Randy Daytona, he squats down. Yes. And stares right in his face. Bang hands out name tags. Servant girl asks Ernie to save her. <laughs> Bang makes eye contact with Wong. My goodness. What a blast from the past. <laughs> He said it. He said it. That's a movie he's in, too. If it isn't my old master, Wong, the old horn dog, how's tricks? Wong has waited many years to meet him again face to face. George points him to her. Yeah, he's not facing him. Tell me, Randy, does he still dress as if he shops at Elton John's garage sale? So, Randy Daytona, the golden boy who couldn't even bronze. You're Wong's new protege. Well, FYI, Wong has always said I was his greatest pupil. I said you could have been great. But you never finished your training. As I recall, you kicked me out, but you did teach me one thing, Master. <sighs> Promptness. Exposition. And you were 15 minutes late to the banquet. Soup got cold. Signals Daisha. She puts a dart in her staff, blows it, hits the mysterious Asian man in the neck. Kill Shang. Yeah. Now... Did they kill Shang because he was responsible for them being late? Or was this a bolo method? Oh, I think it was an accident. Yeah, I thought she missed. She didn't keep that thing on her. She fucked that up. She doesn't miss the rest of the movie, so I could see a means point here. Well, she got the hang of it. Why did you think she missed? Why would you kill Shang Tsung? Because he's the one that escorted them, who brought them, mm. and they're late. I can see it. So in that case, it is a bolo thing. Let that be a lesson to you is what he says. Don't let that happen again. Louis Pinnock nomination for walking for saying, let that be a lesson to you in Cantonese. Gentlemen, athletes, I bid you toodles. They drag the dead man out. Aisha shows Randy his room, offers up one of the courtesans of pleasure from Fang's collection. Like sex slaves? He's ass the <laughs> fuck off. That, no. It's so good. You gotta clip it because you could see the internal conflict happening inside him. Where was this in Good Luck Chuck? Oh, man. Because he wasn't funny in that movie. He was all right. He was funnier than fucking Dane Cook. What a bar to clear. No, I, no, I couldn't. No, no, I couldn't, I couldn't. No, no, I, was, I got this girlfriend back home. And, I mean, she's not my girlfriend, but yet. Mr. Feng has gone to great lengths to select the most beautiful courtesans from around the world. They are fully versed in both the sensual and the erotic arts. Sounds a little bit like Taffer. Taffer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to be rude. Mahogany bangs the gong and seven men walk in. Film noir? Yes, film noir, big time. These are all... These these are dudes. These guys, these are dudes. Hey, come in. What's up? What's up? <laughs> He's got a tank top, backwards hat, oh! ass the fuck off. Ass off for Diedrich. Let me just cut to the chase. This whole scene is my golden dumpster. Of course it is. Tell Fang, they're all so good. <laughs> Fine, I'll pick Gary. Yo! Gary! <laughs> Feeling good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gary says if he doesn't spend the night, then he mimes a blow dart death. <laughs> if I had known I was going to end up a sex slave, I never would have gone to that audition in Orlando. Thought I was going to be doing cruise ship shows. Next thing I know, boom, boom sex, sex slave. slave. Always read the fine print, amigo. Before they start talking, he's casually doing the hand thing, <laughs> like one of the checks his breath. Gary gets a brew, gets Randy one. He sits on the bed and Randy gets up immediately, like goes and stands by the door. Spins away. Want to play a board game? Whoa, you got Boggle, huh? Sounds that sounds like, like a, a challenge, challenge to me. <laughs> they hear bed springs from next door. Sounds like somebody's getting lucky. Next morning, they come out laughing. Oh, no, no, dude. I want a rematch. <laughs> Best out of seven. You cannot defeat me. I am the Boggle Master. <laughs> oh, kick some ass out there. Kick some ass, all right? All right <laughs> Be careful. Clip okay. this Arnold impression. You cannot defeat me. Clip it, but I thought Maze wanted to do it. I am the Boggle Master. Louis Pinnock for... Dan Fogel. Fogel? 
Jared Fogel. What did I call him? <laughs> you said Dan Fogel. Oh, shit. Well, it's either that or Muhammad. <laughs> Wong is in very good spirits. His pleasure girl really knows how to handle a man. George walks out. What's up with these cortisones of flight? Randy's like, no, don't do it. <laughs> Master had a fantastic time last night. Yeah. Wong is strolling, happy as can be. His hair's all fucked up. Yes. Ass off for Wong. Walken's wardrobe could be a golden dumpster. He's yes. got this purple get up right now. His purple outfit is CT5 outfits for sure. Might be a horseman. He's with mahogany, two military people, and a guy in an all black suit suit who looks a lot like mal oh the hair fang doesn't understand the guy has to go to the bathroom we've got mass drummers as the <laughs> players walk out fang's got an april spritz with a dragon garnish that's funny he's dancing he's digging the drums welcome to my tournament of champions single elimination sudden death game is to 11 must win by two exposition on the tournament rules happening here a little disappointed they stole our ability to say double elimination yeah as a joke single elimination now freddie fingers wilson this is freddie ha ah, and fang mimicking that ah, he loves it everyone applauds freddie's pecs are heaving in his puma outfit randy's up first hello fang's mansion he does it like a deaf leopard concert hello fang's mansion yeah and no one reacts soldier asked him how disneyland was terry cruz starts making his pecs jump randy tries to make his move by moving his hands yes. underneath them i laugh they kind of dance walking to the table mimicking each other and it's not a terry cruz movie if he doesn't do the robot at some point right it has to yeah good luck man blow it out your ass bitch oh, <laughs> they start big wind up terry has the first serve and this ladies and gentlemen is how I play ping pong. This is my go-to move. Uh, and then you just barely tap it. Yeah. Uh, and then you had to run forward to the net to try to get yeah. to the play. Yeah. I can see that. Randy's caught flat-footed. We get the Trinity from the Matrix camera rotating 180 degrees shot, yes. which will continually happen for the rest of the movie. Now, again, that's not cheap, guys. No, that's expensive. It is the way they did it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh what's that supposed to be? Don't do that. Come on. It's not cheap when you have hundreds of high-speed cameras in a 180 degree circle like the matrix you don't know what they had they had one camera on a dolly ah, who's to say me <laughs> the camera guy were you there was i there no i was not that's what we need to ask zach the next time we got some oakley exposition happening oh. were you there i was i was the paid expert on every movie with oakley's in it furious <laughs> rallying randy wins a point they're getting real sweaty slow motion shots game point randy's got freddy on the ropes then he wins complete silence give it up i cannot hear a what I cannot hear a double ha huh, ha. Huh? Woo! This is very, very, very Def Leppard bullshit ass fucking 80s hair rock. The kind of shit that I bet fucking Bill Simmons listens to when he's about to go work out. He wants to get pumped up, right? Adam Sandler. Because like his chill music is goddamn Chicago and Boston and other fucking bands that are named after cities. But when he wants to get hyped for a little workout, He's putting on some Def Leppard. Aisha kills Terry Crews. Fang congratulates him. Tells Randy, fantastique. Wong always did have an eye for talent. Too bad they're not good for anything else. Oh! Because he's blind. What part of sudden death didn't you understand? Because Randy's scared. Randy gets back to his room, starts packing his bag, can't find a way out, tries to jump out the window. They're metal bars. He's stuck in there. Fang's in a different crazy outfit, has a proposition for him. As Randy is about to bash whoever opens the door. Come, walk with me. I won't bite. Not anywhere it'll show. No. They do what I like to call walking. There you go. Fox, Fox position. position. Yeah, well done, Zach. Wow. I thought you were going to hate that. No, I kind of like it. Matt, I didn't think of it. Shows a weird little pendant zoom that is the security system. <laughs> Otso. Big time Otso. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is so clunky and huge, and that screen <laughs> is doing so much work. It's like, yeah. ah, colors. It's a Tamagotchi. <laughs> Is what it is. They go to a secret entrance behind a stone and a gold altar. Fang silently mouths, I like you to Randy. They enter an armory. Guns is my new business. And business is booming. Polymer guns on sale Thursday go right through a metal detector. Oh, god damn these expositions. Randy accidentally takes one apart. Fang will show him his pride and joy. It's his own private table, custom made. These vests, batteries in them, store enough electricity to kill 3.8 men. Incredibly specific descriptive detail every time you miss the voltage doubles to nothing feels like you just stuck a fork in the toaster nobody's ever made it past three zip when randy sees the ping pong table he says snazzy shows him an urn randy let me cut through the bull poop i'd like you to come work for me as my personal assistant slash hanger on me 
Why? Because I think you'd make a wonderful addition to the triad. Really, man? Of course not, no. I want you. Because it would break Wong's heart. Me, his old pupil, Lori, his protege to the dark side. is such a Kodak moment. Reference. Bang wraps on some glass. Do you have any idea how hard it is to get a panda? Very hard, actually. <laughs> oh, maybe he's dead. Not sure. Not really sure what they eat. And then he just walks away and all we see is a panda head. I don't know if it's asleep or if it's dead or what's happening. This is just so weird. I wasn't crazy about this panda joke, but the panda joke in the credits made me laugh. We'll get to it. Oh, see, I like this one better yeah. than that one. But nothing's going to beat the stuffed panda. Stunning that we disagree on something. That's huh? crazy. Attitude there. Huh? Yeah, I, was, I don't know what that's about. I don't know. You know exactly what it's about. Manslaughter is getting ready to serve, <laughs> and he is intense. Manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his black glove, and we get the close up of him right next to his black driving glove. Randy tells George how to get to the gun storage. I laugh so hard at this. Complicated instructions. Lower hand, low five, lower hand, low five, upper hand, high five, upper hand, high five. And George just goes, what? <laughs> Carl smashes it. The guy falls over the railing, diving for it. He's walking up in his leather short shorts, farts into his paddle. I blow you my fart. <laughs> How you like that? Randy's against Nagasaki, who's in a sumo uniform. Randy wins. Furious two-handed strokes. This felt like a ripoff of dodgeball. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's dodgeball meets beer fest meets enter the dragon. It's all the same shit. Yeah. George Lopez chokes someone out and sped up motion. They do the Trinity rotation shot again, this time with the ball right over the net. Carl smashes it home while yelling, cutting back and forth to Ernie breaking into the gun room. Randy's playing a Siamese twin. Well, not a Siamese twin. He's playing Siamese twin. Oh. Conjoined twins, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Go with the conjoined twins. Huh? This one is for you, Daytona. <laughs> and the crazy eyes. Craziest eyes. Oh, my God. George in the storage sets the beacon. Wolf hits a winning point into the mouth of his opponent. George walks in freely without the beacon in his ass. We've already reached the final round. Randy versus Carl. Bing a gong. Randy turns right into Carl, inches from his face. You are so close to defeat. So close to defeat, it already reeks of your cheap cologne. Joke's on you, pretty boy. It's not cologne. It's Lady Speed Stick. <laughs> Thank you, master. <laughs> Ass off. <laughs> Randy's worried about getting out of there. George says they're supposed to be here by now, but not to worry. He's got a plan B. Meet me in the John in two minutes. Masioka is there with an AK-47. Offers him an Altoid or Axe body spray. Otso! Hey, these shoes look like they need to shine. Bends over. George kicks him in the face. And then he does this weird little adjust, but he's like, I'm cool adjusting. I didn't like that. I love this exchange between Randy and Wolf. Dude. Hi. Hi. Detona, I have said some cruel things about you. To my friends here at the tournament, I tell them that the reason that you hate me so much is because I had sex with your mother. My mother died when I was two. I hardly knew her. Yeah, I know. It's a horrible thing to say. And yet these things that I say over and over again, I do not mean them. Because in truth, you are the greatest player I have ever seen. Other than myself. Practicing in front of a mirror which I do every day in the nude. I'm sorry for you that your papa is not here to see you. I think he would be very proud of you. Yeah. So proud of you that he would probably pass some money on you again. I could use the cash. Ha ha. Tell your dead parents I said, what's up? Yeah, I know it's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> the pacing and the pauses and the silence and Dan Fogler, straight man during the scene. It's great. You are the greatest player I've ever seen. Other than myself. So fucking funny. Golden Dumpster nominee. So your dead parents. I said, what's up? <laughs> Randy picks up his pops dog tags, dramatic music, walks over to Wong. I'm staying. I've got to play him. Win or lose, I can't keep running away from it. German fruit salad. Now Wong is proud. It's better to die like a tiger than live like a... <sighs> Oh, I don't like that. Randy will go tell George that he's going to play. He goes in the bathroom. George runs out, shoves a roll of toilet paper in Randy's mouth, then breaks his arm in the door. Cut to him holding his dangling arm. How is I supposed to know you're going to change your mind? Tell Fang there's been an accident. 
Bang yanks his arm abruptly. Randy falls hard and fatly. Did that hurt? Yes. <laughs> I have no choice. I have to disqualify you. Carl is our champion. Carl loses his shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is far from over, Daytona. Disembodied voice. You suck. Hey, that stings. Who said that? <laughs> He's with his two tall blonde women, like happy and blue chips. When he makes up his mind about the offer, email him. Pradafan1 at gmail.com. Pradafan, all one word. They got the Gmail in there, so. Yeah. That's right on the cusp of Otso. That would have been cutting edge. Can't tell you how disappointed I am. Then shouts in Chinese. Two henchmen throw him through the opaque wall. Mahogany and henchmen surround them. I'm afraid your reputation has preceded you, Agent Rodriguez. They hold up the tracker. Bad guys have homing beacons, too. The name tag. Ah. Mm. Phil Noir. Competition will continue. Leans into Randy. Hope you're a good sothpaw. Sothpaw. <laughs> Time for Carl against Randy. Three-point game to the death. Randy's having flashbacks to 88. Sees the Disneyland cue card. Has to gather himself. Oh, shit. Tosses his paddle. He's freaking out. I'm cool, man. I'm cool. Forgot about the flashback. Sorry. Just in case no one knew what that sound was, I heard Amin go, oh, shit. Yeah. And I thought, phone must be ringing. Someone's calling. Nope. He was trying to grab the harmonica. Yep. <laughs> Didn't have it at the ready. And that's my fault. I was unprepared. Goes to pick up the paddle. Carl jumps on it, stomps it in half. Oops. <laughs> clumsy, clumsy hippos. Be more careful with your racket. Not like I get these shoes for free. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. I do get them for free. I do. <laughs> Randy brings it to Wong. Mad his brother's paddle. His winning paddle is broken. Wilo, have I taught you nothing? He wipes his ass with the broken paddle. Game not in paddle. Game in you. Oh. Game in you. You cannot change what is past. Oh. Gives him his original Def Leppard paddle back. Triumphant music. He also takes out a 20 CB boombox. Yep. Clip Rock of Ages again. And this is where I learned that was not original to Offspring. Yeah. Same note too, I mean. He's dancing, lip singing. This is Jack Black to the max. Playing air guitar, Wolf's confused. Everybody's starting to feel the song. Puts gum under the table, is about to serve. Fang shoots the CD player. It lights on fire. Slight change in today's program for the final match. Film noir. Part of Carl Wolfstag will be played by. Oh, and they bring Maggie into the room. You get to play her. Ah, oh, stakes, finally. Did we have plot lift off in this movie, by the way? Oh, shit. It's when he gets approached by George Lopez, right? Pretty much, yeah. It's right away in the movie. Yeah. Play her to the death. Thought this would be more interesting. No. This is an outrage. I demand retribution. Like everybody else waiting for Liam Neeson movies for Cinephobe. There it is. Yeah, feature Cinephobe. There you go. Zach and Amin are going to have the same note, too, about the Liam Neeson movie, Remy oh. Neeson. Remy Nissans? Who's Remy Nissans? Yo, Preston? Preston Myers, Lou? What's going on, man? <laughs> Carl gets a dart in the neck. You got a fucking dart in your neck. <laughs> oh, great. Blow dart? Yeah, super. He collapses. Falls out of frame to his death. Mahogany wiping her lips. Randy needs advice from Wong. Sorry, Guelo. I'm out. Game not in paddle. Game in you. Usually my big finish. That was funny. Yeah. They take Maggie's handcuffs off and give her a paddle. She and Randy missed each other. Hey! Let's talky talky more ping pong. Oh, Randy serves. Maggie lets it go. Not going to play him. It would be an honor for me to give you my life. What? I don't know why you couldn't just say that you love me. What? Nice for you, Danny. Yeah, thank you. He hits it off her and it comes back to his side at a point for her. Oh, one. one. That's not one. fair. That wasn't fair. Randy, I'm trying to sacrifice my life for our love. Stop being such a dick. It's not fair. What? <laughs> you guys keep <laughs> reacting to that. It's... Fucking nihilist joke, assholes. His girlfriend gave up her toll. She thought we'd been getting million dollars. It's not fair. Fair? Who's the fucking nihilist around here, you bunch of fucking crybabies? Keeps bouncing it off her torso. She moves the paddle. She's doing cartwheels and flips. He's still hitting it off of her, repeatedly off her face. I love you, Maggie. Mahogany gets bored, blow darts the paddle out of Randy's hand. Bang wants them both killed. We're missing Antiques Roadshow. Repeat offender. Otso. Oh, no, not Otso. I still watch Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, no, that's still a banger. With my dad. Just PBS. Aisha blows the dart at Randy. Maggie throws her paddle. He catches it, stops the dart, throws the paddle back to Aisha's head. Protruding dart sticks in her fucking forehead. You got a fucking dart in your forehead. <laughs> oh, crap. Falls over sideways. She did. And this is when I wondered, is 
Aisha being the bodyguard supposed to be a reference to A View to Kill, oh. where Grace Jones is Christopher Walken's bodyguard in the Bond movie. Oh, that's a good call. Perhaps. Also, future cinephobe. Every once in a while, you get one, Maze. Oh, thanks, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Leave all that in. You know what that sounded like, I mean? Silence. Nice for you, Danny. Yep. Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> now, find the genuine appreciation for a second. That's when Ernie grabs his gun and does a very on-the-nose Scarface impression. Oh, boy. On the nose? Which nose? Whose nose? This shit is awful. That was terrible. The nose that's caked in cocaine. Oh. Clip Johnny Manziel. How you lose 40 pounds? You're on a strict diet of blow. Cocaine. Cocaine. I think I want to try that cocaine. Fang stops his guys from shooting up the place. Are you insane? These are not replicas. Well, some of them are, but they're limited edition replicas. Uh, it's funny. In the hallway, Ernie brings out the second tracker. Backup is right outside. FBI helicopter landing, getting shot at. As they're running out, Randy forgot something. He dips Maggie for a kiss, has her wish him luck, takes Ernie's Uzi, and goes down to... Ah, the courtesans. Courtesan cage. He shoots the lock off. The courtesans are so ass off, by the way, as they're going. Oh, my God. They're incredible. The rest of the movie. Ass off? Yes. Ass off. Oh, yeah. No. Off. Off. No. They're the cell like, ah! <laughs> no, man. I really disagree with you guys' take because Gary gives him a big hug and kiss on the cheek, and he says, as a friend, leads him back towards the stairs. Fang is waiting there with a laser sight, Yeah, and we've got all of the courtesans cowering in the background, and besides Gary... Everyone is ass on being scared. No, they're all so good. There is some serious orange mocha frappuccino Zoolander's roommate's energy. That's the point. Coming from the guys in the left corner of this photo. Look at it. That's the point of the characters. Look at it. Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Are you kidding me? This dude is so ass off, They're man. so ass on, dude. All of them. Oh, come on, man. No, no, man. no, 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 look, no, no, Look no. on the black guy's face, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's terrified, man. And here we go. What are you going to do? You're going to murder me like you murdered my father? <laughs> you people sound like a broken record. You killed my so-and-so. You murdered what's-his-face. I demand blah, blah, blah. Get over it. <laughs> Brandy's going to convince Fang to play him in ping pong. Tall courtesan tells Gary, this rescue sucks, dude. With his ass on. No. They're battering the door with the ram. May they casually break some glass. Fang tells his henchman to take the self-destruct doohickey and show it to the FBI. I'll buy him some time. And he flips a switch on the special table. Battery powers up. He serves. They rally. Randy turns and smashes the ball at the henchman's feet, tripping him. He drops the self-destruct remote, which activates. Everyone panics. Five minutes. Fang serves again after Randy gets shocked. It's over, Fang. The ping pong table doesn't know that. If we stop playing, it'll kill us both. You can't turn it off? God, that's so stupid. <laughs> Randy tells everyone to get to the boat. Gary's going to save the panda. Aw. Uh, panda's dead. FBI trying to arrest everybody. They're just evacuating. Fang hits it off the wall. Randy's point, but he gets shocked. Bill Noir. Change the rules a little. Should have told you. But you missed the table. The way I play, you can hit it off anything you want. One bounce, it counts. My bad. Third point, they take it off the table to the floor, smashing shit. Fang grabs a second paddle. They're going into the gun room. Now they're in a bamboo forest. Now we're just going through everywhere. Ernie, Wong, and Maggie with the courtesans come up on the long hair henchman. He screams, rips his shirt off. Dude, that guy's ripped. This guy looks really tough. Tells Maggie to take him. Oh, uh, get it. Maggie roundhouse kicks him in the face, kicks him in the side, hand stands up, mounts his neck, oh. headbutt, multiple blows to the face, does a full handstand on his face, legs spread up, double kick, backflip off of him, lands perfectly, blows dirt off her hands. Guy looks normal, but then he faints. This is ass on, by the way. Two minutes till detonation. Now they're ping-ponging on the rickety wooden bridge. Why did you say detonation like combination? Detonation. <laughs> detonation. <laughs> combination. Drake, you should have taken my <laughs> offer. I would have given you anything. Anything in the world. I want my father back! <laughs> Poppy Talk is closing strong to finish this movie out. Yeah, the funniest shit about the funny pronunciation of detonation is, Maze, I know exactly where you feel. Detonation. Because... I felt the same way when I said goys, and I was like, maybe no one will notice. <laughs> goys? Hey, goys? And it's like, yo, it's the worst feeling. It's like, maybe I could just keep talking, and no one will stop. What's that tweet? The funniest thing is when one of your friends. There's no comedy in the world that's as funny as when 
one of your friends fucks up a word. Fang puts a crazy spin on it, bounced away from Randy. The ball hits the water. He falls through the bridge, now hanging on by his one arm. And the paddle. Paddle's wedged between the planks. He's getting shocked. Fang says to get up. Ernie's loading everyone into the boat on the dock and untying it. And then Richie April from The Sopranos shows up with the machine gun and two ladies. Yeah. Get your own boat, Pedro. I oh. call this one. Oh. The quarters and start screaming in horror with their asses off. On. Off. On. Off. off. On. <laughs> oh, dude. Me, Bunny, and the Chinese broad. That's not the way you talk to a broad, you understand? Are taking off. Ernie takes out a pen. He says it contains enough cyanide to kill everyone within 100 yards. Think I'd come here without a backup plan? I'm FBI, pendejo. Pendejo. There you go. No accent. Zach was monitoring that one closely. Yeah, <laughs> his eyebrows went up. He's like, his face going to fucking say it? Kicks the pier. It collapses like a folding chair. Somehow, he's already picked up the Chinese broad. Richie Stuntman goes right in the drink. He asks if she likes chorizo. 30 Mac. Because he's Hispanic. Oh. I don't know if you picked up on that at all. They boat away. See Randy hanging from the bridge. Wine Wong shouts that Fang only finished half of his training. How did he know that Randy was hanging there? Who knows? Randy pulls up to triumphant music. I believe it's my serve, Fang. Oh, big deal. Never finished the training. What does that mean? I have no honor or something? Means you have no backhand. Slow motion. Randy smashes it. He yells. <sighs> Fang reaches for the backhand and then just stops. Yeah. Yeah. Because he can't. Never learned it, apparently. Gets zapped. Gets electrocuted. Falls off the bridge into the water. Sparks fly everywhere. Ass off for this stuntman fall. <laughs> Last 10 seconds under self-destruct. Guard shoots at Randy. He jumps down to the boat. Compound explodes like the house and honest thief or like the observatory and simon says <laughs> i couldn't tell what was better the shot of the model with the person running away from it or the cgi shot of it exploding above the rope bridge cgi shot for me either way they're both terrible randy goes to kiss maggie all the sex slaves interrupt to congratulate him say that <laughs> yeah. was amazing the kiss on the he looks so uneasy ass off come on man don't do this they're trying to nuzzle him like pets he'll stop it then he kisses maggie Two months later, yep. reopen the restaurant. She's training George Lopez with wooden spoons. Man, I got to say, they did not need this scene. No. No, you could just end it there. They threw in a bunch of callbacks and jokes here that were not effective. They had to get to 90. Say hello to my little friend. More Scarface. No. Wong folds up a photo in a shrine to his brother, but it's upside down. No, that's Robert Patrick. Pop. Oh, well, the shrine was to Maggie's dad. The shrine was to his brother, but then they add the picture. Of it's a double poppy talk shrine. Yes. A lot of poppy. Pop, yeah. Pop, pop. Fantastic. Pop, pop. Thanks, Wong, for everything Wong has done for him. Gets him a little something. Master Fane's protest, but accepts. Let me guess. It's something small. He's shaking it. Cufflinks? Thinks it's jewelry, but can't guess. It's a new Lucky Cricket. It was a Lucky Cricket. He's dead. Nah. Wong will carry the box. Bring his spare change. Great honor. Jason shows up. yells Guilo at him. Just wanted to say, no hard feelings. Good luck on the new school, Guilo. Daps him up. Dragon shows up. Got a plant. Little bamboo shoot. Thinks it's all good. Then she kicks him in the dick. He falls fatly one more time. Ah. Points and talks shit before running away. Jason translates. Not over yet, Whitey. Wong tells him to walk it off. A true ping pong player must always be aware of his surroundings. Oh, fell down the elevator shaft. Ding. He says, I'm fine. I'm going to Disneyland. Call back. Wow. This is funny. I did like the, we should keep this closed with a gate. There's a blind man walking around. I, I think it's kind of funny. It's like the whole, like, what's the stick for? You know? I like the stick joke better. Yeah. I don't think you can do that kind of joke twice. That's fair. We should have this closed. Right? Hey, what's this for? Roll credits. But we're going to do more lip sync dancing. Vogler singing, pour some sugar on me. Yeah. The whole cast is at a karaoke bar. What's happening? Yeah. This is like 3,000 miles. Miles to Graceland. Yep. This was probably fun for the cast to shoot, I suppose. And then we get outtakes of everybody as they go through the cast, but the outtake of Diedrich Bader with the fake panda ass off. Ah, mm, the first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. Who cares if you lose the game? You got this off your chest. I mean, it's just one night of bar trivia. Ooh. One night of bar trivia is sacrosanct us. Trivia! is sacrosanct.
Thomas Lennon wrote the character of Fang expecting to play it himself. Whoa. I'm glad he didn't. Yeah, same. As mentioned in the movie, it is forbidden for Wong to teach Ping Pong to Guaylo. This is most likely a reference to Dragon, the Bruce Lee story starring Jason Scott Lee, the guy from this movie. Bruce was forbidden by the elders to teach martial arts to anyone other than Asians. And also, I've got an interview from a press tour. Now, what were some of the challenges of, of actually learning to play this game for the first time? You know, it, it's very technical. It's more technical, I think, than, than people actually realize. Um, I got into it with this very casual attitude, but it ended up being something that was really difficult. And Dan and I were like, oh my God, we were so frustrated because we only had a certain amount of time to get really good at it. And it just took a lot of focus. I, I, I remember after ping pong training, I would be exhausted. Like, I would be like knackered, like I couldn't even stand up and I was like <laughs> exhausted and I needed to eat. and. Yeah, no, it's really intense. And also Robert Ben Garant and Tom Lennon saying that there was no CGI in this movie. Okay. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys is there's not a lot of CG in this either with the balls, right? Mm -hmm. Most of that's none, real. None, none, none. It's amazing that I could sit here and tell you that there's no CGI in this movie. No trick photography. It's amazing that I can tell you that, but I wouldn't say it if it weren't true. One take, uh, most of the... But you can tell it's not true in the movie. I mean, you know it's real watching it. Right, exactly. Now, did you guys actually see a real off-table game when you were going to these underground ping pong clubs? The ping pong clubs that we went to, um, usually what they are is in the evening, they're a, a ping pong uh, school, and during the daytime, there's like a whole bunch of eight-year-old girls doing gymnastics <laughs> with ribbons on sticks, and then, you know, at around 6 p.m., they kick the little girls out and they start, and it gets, it gets hardcore. Yeah. And it never really gets that hardcore. It's, they, they put a bunch of ping pong tables out. So did you spend a lot of time in these underground uh, ping pong clubs? That... I did, I did. And what was that experience like? <sighs> it's dark. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of hardcore stakes for very little amount of money. But um, I hurt a couple people, and I think I hurt myself in the process. Robert Ben Grant said this is a miserable experience making this movie. Wow. His directorial debut. I'd like you all to do an experiment on a plan, something that uh, may benefit mankind. And if you would devise something that's groundbreaking, I guarantee you a A in this course. Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, man. You following me? You can't, you can't do that, Lionel. Look, man, if you don't want me to have a foreman job, I understand, but I need my fucking job, man. Lewis Pinnock Accent Award. You got the Dan Fogler Arnold impression, but I think it's got to go to Thomas Lennon's German accent. Christopher Walken speaking in Chinese as well, but yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Let's show me who the horsemen are, guys. Yeah, we got soul. Five horsemen, a lot of exposition. Guilo is around, slow motion, Trinity, 180 degrees rotating shot, but nah, man. Mm -mm. Here's your medal stand. Bronze medal, exposition. Mm. Silver medal, film noir, or at oh. least an attempt to film noir. Not CGI? No, CGI is not medal. Mm. But your gold medalist is far and away. Poppy talk. For sure. Who's that man? Dueling poppy talk, everyone in dueling piano bars. That's what it was. It's just like, mm -hmm. my pop. The fact that we got three new poppy talk drops. Oh my God, yeah. Him waking up from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe in through nose, out the mouth. Ash on, ash off. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Ass on, fuck it, ass off. Ass on, fuck it, ass off. Michael Bean Memorial Ass On Award. Is it George Lopez? And I said, no, it's the male courtesans of pleasure, but no. you guys are going to disagree with me. No, absolutely not. So who is it? It's George Lopez. It's Senor Lopez. Oh. I didn't say Senor Lopez. Oh, boy. well, <laughs> we did. The reason I can say and it's not offensive is because I'm not doing the accent and I'm not saying it with a different emphasis. 
A different emphasis makes it an inappropriate word that we should not say or celebrate at all. The emphasis is what makes it offensive? Yeah, I think, Zach, if you said it, oh. then I would be like, okay. That was the most offensive you could have. No, no, antiquado. <laughs> You can't just say antiquado and it neutralizes everything that was said. Wow. It does. Carl Weathers Memorial Ass Off Award. Mm. My man Balls of Fury was solid. Yes, he was. He's good, yeah. James Hong is Master Wong. Christopher Walken is Fang. Yes. I mean, I really love Diedrich Botter, Not Enough Time. Patton Oswalt. Patton Oswalt, cameo. David Koechner, cameo. You know, a lot of cameos in this movie. I think it's Thomas Lennon as Carl Wolfstag. Yeah. I think it's Thomas Lennon. Yeah. The eyes, the intensity it takes to be that in every scene, right? Every, yeah. Even when he's whispering. He's intense. The leather short shorts, for some reason, so good. put it over the top for me. Ah, file. The way he was posing in them. I'm going to tell you when. It was when he spit on the dog tags. <laughs> it's so over the top <laughs> that it's like, oh, man, you got to get this. And he wrote the movie, so. Are you good at keeping secrets? Absolutely. Because I've got a, a present for you. Secret present outside by the dumpster. Is it a baseball mitt? To fit you like a baseball mitt, like a glove, I hope. Golden Dumpster nominees... The silver satin pepper mill jacket. James Hong's ping pong is a well-aged prostitute monologue. Carl shit-talking Randy before the final match. So we just referenced Randy Daytona's Def Leppard air guitar. I also have, that's not why I'm here. I actually thought that was part of the show. Until the ambulance showed up, I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> when Patton Oswalt comes out mouthing shit. <laughs> And he says, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Yeah. Them surrounding him, like he's about to whoop, whoop his ass, but then they start cheering, uh, film noir, but then they throw him in a dumpster and they spit on the money. There's a lot of spitting, which by the way, should have been a horseman. A lot of spitting. What's the old fashioned way? And everyone's just looking at each other like, yeah. Uh. George asks him, what's the stick for? After he runs on the fence. But I already told you guys what mine is. Lock it in. It's the whole sex slave courtesan introduction all the way up until the boggle game has ended and he's like, I need a rematch that whole scene. I know we try not to pick the same thing. So I'm just going to pick a specific part of that scene where you want to play a board game. He opens it. You got boggle. And just the line, that sounds like a challenge to me. The <laughs> way he delivers it is so fucking funny to me. Oh my God. That's good. My favorite part is of that whole scene is the introduction. Cause he comes in and said, sup, sup. Nah, I couldn't. And then she says, Gary, Yo, <laughs> like just fucking snapping his fingers and punching his fat hands. Oh, oh man. Fat hands. <laughs> punching his fingers is what I was going to say. <laughs> hands. Uh -huh. My pick is James Hong's ping pong is a well-aged prostitute monologue. <laughs> oh my God, he's so asshole. <laughs> Smoking, looking off into the distance. It came from personal experience, you might say. It was a little too descriptive on the details. A lot of descriptive details. Incredibly descriptive detail. Too accurate. Well, I mean, you canonized it, motherfucker. Motherfucker. I like that. Over file. I remember when this movie came out. I was very excited for it because I thought it was going to be like dodgeball. And then I saw it in the theater. I can't remember. Did I see it with my brother or not? I don't remember that part. Just say you did. But I do <laughs> remember walking away like it was all right, but it wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I watched it here and there when it comes on Comedy Central. But then I watched it when we watched it on Mad Dog four years ago now. Wow. And I liked it. And then I haven't seen it since then. And so I was like, well, maybe it was just a pandemic or whatever. But you know what, man? This movie's a file. It's funny. We got some ass off performances by everyone. We didn't even mention Aisha Tyler, who I thought she was very good in her role as well. Even George Lopez, I know we gave him ass on, but even he gave me a couple of lines and scenes to laugh hard at. This is a file for me. It's a nice down the middle file. Mace? Yeah, it's a tepid file for me. They really wanted me to phobe it with that last scene the last scene's real bad yeah good god just end this shit you guys have the lead do not fumble it here at the end they had to get to 90 right well that was the thing a lot of this movie felt like man we're really stretching this to get to 90 minutes yeah yeah, yeah i suppose reading the cast is very exciting a lot of very funny people in it all of them. This is the most crowded field ever for the Del Lindo Award because everybody showed up, did, did great, and then left. No, no, man. And they got Dan Fogler. No, Dedra was there for days, man. He was working. Sounds like a challenge. Terry Crews, maybe <laughs> one day, but yeah. Zach. I don't remember whether I liked it or didn't like it. I had it on DVD. Me too. I don't think I saw it in the theater, but for some reason, I ended up with the DVD. 
might have been the Columbia House days. I don't know. I don't know how I ended up with this thing, but watched it. Never really remembered if I liked it or not. Didn't remember it for Mad Dog. Going through it. Pretty good time. It's pretty good. It's not close to the funniest movie we've done, but it's pretty consistent throughout. Surprised at how good Dan Fogler is. We can sweep that greenly. There it is. Back to back green sweeps for your boy Amin. Well, that's what Blue Chips was our pick. No, it was my pick, bro. Well, it was on my list though, so that doesn't doesn't matter. Should have picked it instead of picking MVP. No, because I I was being a good teammate, like I always am. Oh well, I know you're trying to do this bullshit canonizing thing. No, you completely forgot about it. Because remember, I it's knew on my it was going to happen. How did I? It's on my list. No, you, I made a list no. of things to do in 2024. And yet, when I said, "Hey, are we still doing Black History Month picks for February?" May said, "Sure." And you're like, "Yeah, good luck. How are you going to get around that one?" You didn't remember it then. Who cares? It was on my list. And you had an opportunity. It was on my list. All right. Well, congratulations. Hey, you can send us your Fober file, Golden Dumpster, Ass on, Ass off, Horseman, Lift off, Pinnock. At Talk Hoops, at Darth Amin, at Corn Puzzle, at Cinephile Pod, at Count the Dinks. Delroy Linda all in the day's work is a fucking funny <laughs> award, man. Next time we make love, you introduce me to Jade. My pick? Yep, it is your pick, Zach. Let me make sure this thing is still where it needs to be in terms of availability. Yeah, it's on Tubi. Okay, still on Tubi. And Prime. Retribution? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's on Stars. Uh, and I'm not picking that yet. I want Retribution! We got to drop for that episode. Do you want to <laughs> say the guest or we want to leave that for a surprise? I would say leave it for a surprise, but he already tweeted about it. So the cat might be out of the bag on this one. All right. Well, we will have a very, very, very special guest for this episode. Amin likes to do newer movies for some reason. Not me. I like to live in that sweet spot of the 90s. In fact, I'll be judging you if you don't like this movie. I'll be judging you if it's not a complete file sweep. You betray the law! Not that judge. Oh. In fact, the movie kind of happens at a time of day where I don't get too excited. It's going to be tough for you. It's Judgment Night. Oh. Emilio Estevez, Dennis Leary, Radio. All of them in this movie. Scotty Barnes is in this? <laughs> no, don't oh, supercharge wow. that. Don't do that. <laughs> you didn't pick radio? Daisy Chain. Shit, man. It's up to you, Mace. <laughs> yeah. Radio is the movie that I feel like is haunting me in real life. I found the DVD. I saw the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> you have the DVD or you bought it? I think I bought it. Yeah, I bought it. Cuba Goody Jr. is just lurking around the corner. Staring. It's on Max. I think we've earned the right to do it now. <laughs> we've earned? Yeah. What do you mean we've earned? We done did enough cinefo to earn the right to pick radio. <laughs> that is a bold claim. That is not how it works at all. <laughs> what do you guys think is going to happen when we do that episode that's so scary? What's scaring you? I might get fired. I don't know. For what? I didn't make the movie. The things that will be said in that episode. What's going to be said? Okay. Come on, I mean, He's inspired them. What? Is he, like, really strong or something? Well, no, don't do that. Don't do that. We haven't even done it yet. We haven't even watched the movie, and you're already going to get us canceled. Be respectful. Are we still recording? <laughs> ah, mm, the first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. <laughs>